What's up guys? Today I'm walking to school to do something a little bit special. Uh, we don't have school in our normal place. Today is the orienteering's dog, uh, the orienteering day that they have here in Sweden for a subject that we really don't have in American PE. Uh, orienteering, the kids basically have to navigate in the woods with a map and a compass and find different things. It's basically like a huge scavenger hunt. Super fun. Um, we never had anything like this in American PE. So yesterday, me and some other PE teachers went out and hid all these things according to the map exactly where they should be. And it's a good thing I had other teachers with me because I've never done orienteering before. And can you imagine if I hid these things in the wrong place and then all the kids fail orienteering because they go to where the thing is supposed to be and it's not actually there. Luckily, there's other teachers with me doing this. So we were able to make sure everything is in the right spot. And I'm super excited for today. Follow along and you'll get to see the full orienteering experience. for me. Uh, we just had orienteering with the 8th graders. It went really, really well. There were some really good people uh, that were really good at finding the uh, controls is what we call them. Uh, and so now it's my turn because the 8th graders are done, the ninth graders are next. They have a little bit of a more challenging course. Uh, so my job is to actually go and find all of the ones that the 8th graders had, bring them back so we don't have to pick them up at the end of the day. So this is like a real challenge for me. I've only learned how to do orienteering after one day and now I have to find all of these. Many of these I did actually not hide myself, so it'll be a good little test for me. Uh, can I do orienteering after only one day of experience? This is a skill that I really should know. So here's the map of all the ones I need to find. The ones that are X'd out we did not do this year. I need to find number 11 first. So if I look at my map, that's right here, number 11. Uh, and right in front of me, I've got the mini golf area. Uh, so you can see the mini golf area right there on the map. And so using this map, I should be able to find them. Let's see how it goes. <music> Off-roading here because it looks like this number 11 is not on the beaten path So I think it's roughly in this area Just kind of looking for it right now. Ooh, there's like spider webs and stuff. I hate spiders I think I see something over there that orange little flag. Let's go see if that's it So this looks like It is a orienteering control, but not ours Our class has the smaller ones this one is a big one, so this actually belongs to a different school, which means that this is not the one I'm looking for. So I know I'm in the right area, but this one right here is actually too big. It's not our Pro Olympia control, but I kept walking around and saw that down here, there's another one smaller. I believe that one is the number 11 that I'm looking for. Let's see here. That looks like one of ours. And did I just find my first? Control ever? Ooh, this looks like it's it. Yes, it says Pro Olympia right on there. All right, one for one so far. So you guys can see that this is what it looks like, the control for orienteering. And right at the bottom, this red thing, it's kind of like a little stapler. And it has some spikes in there so that when the kids find this, they can staple their piece of paper and if the spikes go in correctly, we can double check as teachers to make sure that they made it to the right spot. It kind of leaves a little imprint or stamp on their paper so that when they come back in, we can check them off. Did you actually find number 11? And if it has the proper number of holes in the right places, then we know that they got it correct. So this is actually a really cool and really useful skill, I think. Knowing how to read a map and knowing how to find stuff, 
out in nature. I think this is really cool and I can't believe we didn't really do anything like this in America. I mean, when we were in elementary school, we had outdoor school for a few days, but I was sick, so I never got to go to outdoor school, but they teach you how to uh, walk around in nature and do a lot of those things. But it's only like four days out of their entire like elementary school experience in America. Here, every year, kids are supposed to do this orienteering. Uh, it's part of their like main grading criteria for PE here in Sweden, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, and if I could ever go back and teach in America, I'd love to incorporate this kind of stuff because where I'm from in America, there is so much awesome nature and cool activities to do that I think the kids would absolutely love this type of thing. Uh, just go hiking, play some like scavenger hunt type stuff, find some stuff in nature, and knowing how to read a map is a very valuable skill. I feel like this wandering through the woods and trying to find different stuff is kind of like the real life Hunger Games. Like, I wish we could do orienteering, but then do like an airsoft war in the forest. I think that'd be super dope. Maybe like combine orienteering with another skill. And since we're talking about airsoft wars right now, I gotta tell you guys about the one time that I was in an airsoft war. And so uh, it was actually really crazy because I had some friends that were really into airsofting and they were like, hey, you should come out to this forest with us, hang out uh, and try airsoft with us. And they took it really seriously, but I wasn't really aware of that. I was like, oh yeah, that sounds cool. I'd love to do airsoft with you guys. Uh, I didn't really like think about what I was wearing. I was wearing some like red uh, soccer outfit, like my red soccer jacket that I would wear at the time. And so I wore this, I went to go be a part of this airsoft war and when I got there I realized I had made a huge mistake because everybody out there that was doing this airsoft war they were going like full on like mud on the face and like covering these, themselves in like leaves and they had like these fancy hats that they would wear uh, <laughs> that made them like blend into the forest and to make a long story short this airsoft war lasted like an hour I didn't see a single person during that hour, yet I still got shot like 20 times in that hour before I was like, all right, that's enough of this. I cannot be a target like I am now, walking around in red in this green forest and not seeing anybody. So that was my one experience with airsoft. If anybody invites you to an airsoft war, do not wear red or you're just gonna be a target for those people that actually take that seriously. Uh, yeah, that was absolutely crazy. I gotta say though, being out in nature right now is so awesome. It really reminds me of home because we got so many awesome hiking trails, as I was saying. Uh, and Sweden's known for having some really great nature too. And it's so cool that they incorporate these nature activities in with their schooling. So this one I'm going after now is the number 13. Uh, I don't know if you can see it there, but there's actually like two trails here that kind of split off from each other. And I just referenced that on the map, so I know I'm on the right track. Ooh, I think I see the number 13. I think that's ours right up here. Let's see if I got it. Oh, that's a small one too. That looks like it's one of ours. And to confirm, yes it is. It says Pro Olympia right there. So that's the basic idea with orienteering. Uh, I don't want to keep this video too much longer than it has to be. I just wanted to give my thoughts on it because this is something that I've never done before. And here I am in Sweden teaching it. But I think after one day, I was pretty much able to learn the basics and now I'm able to find these controls uh, it's actually not too hard once you get the hang of it and I think it's really really cool that this is part of the school curriculum here in Sweden so uh, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video uh, but thanks so much for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you want to hear more of my thoughts and my experiences that I have here in Sweden alright guys see you in the next video